Hey guys, you're watching Dansky, and in this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create some delicious animated text using Photoshop and Premiere Pro. Rightio, so I've created a new project in Premiere Pro, and first of all, I need some video. So I'm going over to Envato Elements, I'm going to grab some video from here. And don't worry if you don't have a subscription, there's some video footage you can use linked in the video description below. But for me, I'm going to use the Inky Water Explosion because this just looks sick. So let's download that and hop into Premiere Pro. So here we are. First thing to do is double click in the project panel and import the video clip. Next, we can drag this onto the timeline to create a new sequence. You can now click and drag the playhead to scrub through your video, or you can press the spacebar to start and stop your video. Next, let's go up to Sequence and select Sequence Settings. You can now change the width and height of your video, so I'm going to go with 1920 by 1080. Next, I'm going to select the clip and then click and drag to adjust the scale. And I can then double click on the text in the project panel and rename the sequence to something more desirable. Sick ink animation text thing, perfect. Now it's time to switch over to Photoshop. We'll start by going up to File and down to New, and then create a document with these dimensions, nice and big. Click Create, and then select the Type tool, click anywhere, and type some text. Hello! Now I can double click on the background layer, give this a name, and make this a layer of its own. Next, it's time to right click on the text layer and select Blending Options. Change the knockout to shallow, and then bring the fill opacity down to zero. Once you're happy, click OK, hold Shift to select both layers, and press Command or Control G to group these together. We can then double click on the text to give the group a name, and this font is still fully editable, so we can adjust the font itself, the weight, the size, the kerning, the leading, the tracking. Oh, what more could you possibly need? Anyway, go to File, Save As, save this as a delicious PSD, and then we're going to hop back into Premiere Pro. Again, you can double click in the project panel and then import that PSD. Drag the PSD onto the timeline above your video clip. And if you hover your cursor over the right edge, you can use the red arrow to extend the length of your clip. And with your PSD track selected, you can adjust the scale from the effect controls panel and just make sure you don't go too small or you will see those white edges. And if we scrub back to the beginning and press play, you can now see the video playing in that space that we knocked out in Photoshop. So again, let's just scrub back to the beginning and then click the stopwatch icon to add a keyframe for scale. Scrub forward a few seconds and then by adjusting the scale, it will automatically generate a new keyframe. And now if you grab the playhead and scrub between those two keyframes, you'll see Premiere Pro animate that change in scale. You can also click on the left and right arrows to snap the playhead to a particular keyframe. So in this example, I use this just to make the text a pinch smaller. Now I can snap to that second keyframe, select both tracks, and then reduce the length a little bit because they don't need to be this long. We can also use the plus or minus keys to zoom in or out of the timeline. And I'm also going to select my inky water explosion clip and animate the scale for this as well. Why am I animating both? Well, I've got the text gradually getting larger. The inky water explosion is going to get smaller. And basically they're going in opposite directions, which I think might look quite cool. Who am I kidding? It definitely looks cool. Now we can slow that inky clip down even more by right clicking and changing the speed to something like 50%, but because the clip wasn't shot at a high frame rate, it now looks a bit choppy, which isn't great. But we can right click on this clip and change the time interpolation to optical flow, and this trick works more often than not. And we will need to render the timeline to see these changes, and the speed of this will depend on the beef in your computer. Not literal beef, like, processing power. And then once that's done, you can play it back and see how it looks. Oh, hello there, you beautiful inky letters. You looking fan this evening. And now we've slowed down our clip, it's actually longer. So let's just bring that length in a little bit. And because I have some quite distinctive color in my video clip, I'm going to open the Lumetri color panel and I'm going to change the hue. And whether you do this step will depend on the video clip you're using, but I have a lot of ready orange in there, so I can very easily change this to something else. And you can see from the effect controls panel, I now have Lumetri color listed and I can click the effects icon to turn this on or off. So I've changed the color slightly. Let's close this panel down and hop back into Photoshop. 
And remember, this text is still fully editable, so I can change the word, I can save the document, switch back over to Premiere Pro, those changes will be updated, give this a render, and then play the clip again. So it's looking pretty good now. Let's hop back into Photoshop because another reason why you might use this technique is I can now select the background, I could invert this, I could select the brush tool and then just brush in a load of particles. And arguably this does look quite rubbish, yes. But my point is we can now save this, hop back into Premiere Pro and pull through all that texture as well. And if you're like me and you love getting creatively bonkers in Photoshop, well, now you can bring it all into Premiere Pro too. And we're pretty much done. So all that remains is to render everything and then we can play the final animation. And there we go, that wraps up the video. So if you did enjoy this one, remember you can subscribe for more, ring the bell for notifications, take care and I'll see you next time.